Hello friends, how are you? In the previous videos we were talking about, we have talked about the gastric acid physiology. We have talked about the different types of cells present in the gastric pits and their secretion. We have also talked about the exact mechanism of action, how gastric acid is synthesized and released from the parietal cell. We have also talked about the regulation of gastric acid from the parietal cell by different substances like histamine, uh, gastrin, acetylcholine, uh, prostaglandin, somatostatin. We have also talked about the exact cellular mechanism and which types of second messengers are involved in the secretion of acid from the parietal cell. In today's video, we will be talking about the pathophysiology of ulcer, pathophysiology of peptic ulcer disease. So first of all, let me tell you what is peptic ulcer disease. Obviously, the break in the epithelial cells of GIT in the epithelial cell. When the epithelial cells uh, of GID are broken down, it will be called as peptic ulcer disease. And it is of mainly two types. Gastric ulcer, if that break is present in the GID, it will be in the stomach, sorry, it will be called as gastric ulcer. And when that break is present in the duodenum, it will be called as duodenal ulcer. Okay, now let's talk about the symptoms. Uh, Obviously, the most common symptoms of gastric ulcer or duodenal ulcer is pain. But the difference between gastric ulcer and duodenal ulcer pain is that gastric ulcer pain, uh, the, uh, ulcer in stomach, its pain mostly arises right after the meal. So pain right after meal. This is the basically symptom of gastric ulcer. Okay, and similarly in case of duodenal ulcer, pain mostly awake at night. In duodenal ulcer, pain mostly occur at night. So in duodenal ulcer, mostly pain occur at night. Other than pain, there are some other common symptoms which include like nausea and vomiting, uh, weight loss is also a common uh, symptom, dyspepsia and uh, heartburn are also very common with the uh, peptic ulcer disease. Now let's talk about the causes. There are two very important and very common uh, causes. The first one is Helicobacter pylori. Helicobacter pylori, also called as H. pylori. It's a basically spiral shaped gram positive bacteria that play a very important role in the pathophysiology of gastric ulcer. Similarly, uh, the other very important cause is NSAIDs. Non steroidal anti inflammatory drugs like uh, uh, diclofenac, like uh, uh, indomethacine, etc. These are the uh, drugs that are made mostly used for the inflammation but as a side effect they may cause peptic ulcer disease okay in today's video we will be more specifically talking about the pathophysiology of uh, peptic ulcer disease by H. pylori we will see how H. pylori causes the ulcer in the next video we will talk about the other reason which include NSAIDs and some kind of carcinoma uh, or any other condition that can increase the gastric acid it can also gastric acid secretion it can also be the reason of peptic ulcer disease uh, example is uh, Zollinger Erlangen syndrome Zollinger Erlangen syndrome in this case, case gastric acid secretion also increases so it could also be the reason of gastric ulcer well uh, as i have explained that uh, today we will be talking about the uh, uh, pathophysiology of uh, gastric ulcer by h pylori now first of all let's see the structure of this bacteria this is a gram positive bacteria here you can see uh, some important proteins are present over there uh, flagella it's a uh, yeah, flagella there that will obviously help in the motility uh, blood antigen binding adhesion uh, baba protein uh, sialic acid binding adhesions uh, saba proteins ureases very important proteins and two other very important protein which include uh, cat a let me write over here. CAG A. Cytotoxin associated 
जीन ए कैन ए एंड वैक ए वैक्यूलेटिंग वैक इज वैक्यूलेटिंग साइटोटॉक्सिन ए so these are two very important protein that will play important role in the pathogenesis of ulcer and these are basically these protein will be mostly used by uh, adhesion or attachment now there are basically four steps h pylori uh, four steps in the h pylori pathogenesis the first is survival in the hd medium first is survival in acidic medium obviously is yes, uh, first of all this bacteria have to survive in the uh, acidic medium of uh, stomach second movement toward the epithelial cells columnar epithelial cells movement toward the epithelial cells of GID. Okay. So first of all, let uh, let's discuss the survival in acidic medium. Here you can see a very important enzyme is present. On the uh, very important enzyme on the outer uh, surface of the bacteria is present. That is called as ureases. And this ureases enzyme is responsible to convert. It is responsible to convert urea. It is responsible to convert urea. into the ammonia and carbon dioxide ammonia and carbon dioxide and we know that this ammonia gas is very basic is very basic it will convert red litmus paper blue okay if you will uh, expose litmus paper to ammonia that will be converted into blue so it means this ammonia is very basic gas so by using this ammonia these bacteria they will start neutralizing the nearby acid they will start neutralizing the nearby acid now so the nearby acid will start getting neutralized as we know as we know that acid and base when react they will form salt and water and salt is a neutral so by the reaction of ammonia with the hcl that is present in the stomach the acid hcl will get neutralized will get neutralized so in this way the requirement number 1 will be fulfilled survival in the acidic medium and for the survival this bacteria is used to going its enzyme urease and that enzyme will convert urea into ammonia and carbon dioxide okay now point number 2 movement toward the epithelial cell as you know here you can see that these are the epithelial cells then there is a layer of mucus then there is a layer of uh, hcl acid and over them over there bacteria are present so now after the uh, neutralization of acid by ammonia of the now these bacteria will start moving toward the epithelial cells now these bacteria will start moving toward the epithelial cells and for the movement obviously as you know they are going to use their flagellas they are going to use their flagellas with the help of flagella they will move toward the uh, epithelial cells okay now when they will reach over there so assume that now these bacteria now these bacteria has reached they have reached over there uh, near that now they need some protein for the adhesion for the attachment over the epithelial cells for the attachment over the epithelial cell and certain proteins are present which include uh, baba which include saba some other uh, protein uh, proteins like heat shock protein uh, let me write uh, heat shock protein uh, neutrophil activating protein so these are the certain proteins one two three and some uh, other as well that can be used by this h pylori bacteria for the attachment over the epithelial cells okay so now this bacteria has attached over the epithelial cell by using certain protein okay after the attachment after the attachment this so the point number 3 uh step number 1 is survival step number 2 is a movement and step number 3 is attachment 
attachment over epithelial cells. And step number four is cell damage, causing cell damage, epithelial cell. Now, how will this gram positive bacteria will cause damage? Now, these two important protein, cytotoxic protein, they are going to play their very important role. Now, bacteria will release, it will release. CAG A and it will release, it will release VAC A, CAG A and VAC A, cytotoxin associated gene A and vacuolating cytotoxin A. These two important protein are going to play their very important role in the pathogenesis of ulcer. Now CAG A basically what it is going to do, first of all, the first thing it is going to disrupt these tight junctions mostly you know that uh, epithelial cells are very tightly joined with each other with the help of certain proteins occluding and uh, uh, occluding so these uh, occluding or clouding proteins they will be dissolved they will be broken down so when these protein will be broken down now tight junction will be destroyed tight junction of these cells will be destroyed and in the previous video i have talked about what i have talked about let me explain i have talked about that for example this is the lumen of uh, stomach and this is the luminal side this is the luminal side and these are the basolateral side and these are the lateral side of the cell now this uh, luminal side is very resistant is resistance enough against the gastric acid but these lateral or basolateral side they are not resistant they are very sensitive they are very sensitive to the gastric acid now when a tight junction will be destroyed now this acid will start getting entered into the in uh, this space and now when it will affect act, it will act on these lateral side obviously these sides will start getting damaged these sides will start getting damaged Okay, point number one, tight junction will be destroyed. Tight junction will be destroyed. Point number one. Point number two, this CAG A protein, it will get entered into the cell. It will get entered into the cell and it will inhibit all the uh, steps in proliferation and division of cell. Now when the proliferation and division of cell will be inhibited, obviously regeneration mechanism will be stopped. Regeneration mechanism will be stopped. So point number two is this CAG will stop. It will stop proliferation of epithelial cells. It will stop proliferation of epithelial cell. Point number three is this CAN A protein, it will stimulate, it will stimulate these epithelial cell to release a very important cytokine that is called as interleukin 8. Interleukin 8. This CAN A protein will stimulate the release of interleukin 8. Now this interleukin 8, what this interleukin 8 is going to do nearby from the nearby blood vessels as you know in the nearby blood vessels there are lots of neutrophils will be present okay now this interleukin 8 will cause the transmigration attraction invitation this uh, interleukin 8 is going to invite or attract neutrophil over the side of attack now when these neutrophil come over there and you know that neutrophils are basically inflammatory cells inflammatory cells so they will cause a local inflammation in the gastric tissues they will cause local inflammation okay so point number three is point number three is attraction of neutrophil or inflammation we can say attraction of neutrophils or we can say that point number three is what is inflammation they will cause 
inflammation so these are the three very important steps which will be performed by the cat a as a result cell damage will occur okay now what vac a protein is going to do uh, sorry for the disturbance we were talking about the role of cat a and uh, vac a protein that are released uh, from the helicobacter pylori bacteria and they will they, they will cause the cell damage okay all the four step has been discussed role of cat protein has been dis discussed which include that uh, cat a protein basically it will disrupt the tight junction and will expose the lateral side that are very sensitive to the uh, gastric acid similarly they will stop cell proliferation so regeneration of cell uh, gastric cells will not take place furthermore inflammation will be caused by attraction or trans transmigration of neutrophil with the help of interleukin a that will be released from the epithelial cells okay and this release will be in in induced by the cag a protein so now let's talk about the vac a protein vac a vacuolytic a uh, cytotoxin a protein this protein first of all it will induce apoptosis program cell death okay so obviously it will lead to the cell damage of cell death apoptosis it this apoptosis will be done by suppressing the anti apoptotic genes bcl2 like okay so it will be done by the suppressing anti apoptotic genes so when the anti apoptotic genes will be uh, suppressed obviously uh, apoptosis in the cell will take place okay you know that normally in healthy cells both anti apoptotic and apoptotic mechanism are in balanced state so when anti apoptotic genes will be suppressed so obviously apoptotic uh, mechanism will dominate and it will lead toward the cell death or apoptosis so second thing where a protein it can increase it can increase gastrin secretion gastrin is released from the g cells and i have explained in the previous video that this gastrin can induce gastric acid secretion from the parietal cell by direct and indirect pathways so when obviously this vac is increasing the gastric secretion from the g cell obviously it will lead toward the uh, high uh, acid secretion from the parietal cell as well okay uh, this mechanism has been discussed in the previous videos you can visit my those videos as well well the third mechanism is this vac a protein can create channels can create small pores or channels in the epithelial cells and when these channels will be created obviously cell permeability will be disturbed and when the cell permeability is disturbed you know that without uh, uh, after losing cell permeability it's not possible uh, for cell to survive so this is the role of uh, vac a and cag a protein by which they cause the ulcer in stomach as well as well as uh, duodenum well it was all about the pathophysiology of ulcer with respect to h pylori in the next video we will talk about the pathophysiology of ulcer with respect to non steroidal anti inflammatory drug uh, i hope you like my video please don't forget to subscribe and press the bell icon subscribe my channel and press the bell icon and don't forget to like and share this video as well thank you so much